everyone. Welcome to Unity Athens. We're here live on a beautiful Labor Day weekend and also streaming on Facebook. 
for our opening prayer, we have our prayer chaplain, trainer coordinator, and LUT almost complete student. Well, you're always complete, but all of that is going to be wonderfully complete very soon. Peggy Olson. Good morning. Good morning. It's so good to see you here in person. Thank you for being with us this morning. And thank you, audience out in Cyberland. We are happy to see you also. Just a second ago, as I was walking up, I saw that Kevin <laughs> had a slide for the World Day of Prayer. And that's this week. I love the affirmation this year. No, no matter the circumstances, it is well with my soul. We know as unity beings that when we are inside of ourselves with our wonderful energy and we turn within and we lift that vibration up, knowing it is well with our souls, we're sending out that beautiful energy into our world. This morning as we pray, I would like you to notice on the altar, the prayer box. It's our unity prayer box that we've had as long as I've been here, probably for years, maybe before that. Reverend Bronte took it to Canuga this week and people put their requests in and those are blessed. Those are in the box plus our prayer requests. There are many, which we will pray on today and then they're going to Silent Unity to be prayed on for 30 days. So, if you'll join me now, take a moment to center yourself, take a deep breath. If you would like to, you can close your eyes gently. We enter into this presence of all good. We bring our attention and focus to all that is. Divine Spirit, Great Spirit, God within, God surrounding us, God in all of creation. So beautiful. We feel in our hearts a warmth. And we know that as we turn within and as we stand together in oneness, we have the power to raise feelings, energy, vibrations to the highest and the best good. We see peace. We send out abundance. We send out health. We send out loving relationships. Realizing our blessings, this time we have to connect We pray for all of those who may be in a different place, perspective than we are. We pray for those who have emotional pain or physical pain. We pray for every request and not only in our prayer box, but every prayer request that's being lifted up right this moment around the world and all through this week, especially on Wednesday and Thursday for the World Day of Prayer Unity. And now we bless everyone here, everyone listening. We send these beautiful blessings of love and we turn towards joy on all the ones you love. We pray for our communities, for our state, for our country, for our world. Thank you, thank you, holy, holy God, 
for these blessings, for this time, and for this service. So be it and so it is. Amen. Someone's going to think that, that was a little loud. Someone's going to come up with that idea with mask on a stick where you can just, a little hook where you could put it on your belt or something, you know, and just bring it back up. And good morning. It's good so morning. good to have folks here and watching virtually. Our daily word this morning was on the dailyword.com website, and it was, um, posted yesterday from 1991. So I would like to share that with us today for Labor Day weekend, Daily Word. The title was, I'm thankful for the good that is accomplished through my work and the work of others. Today, our Daily Word family joins together in giving thanks for all those whose activity benefits and blesses humanity. We also pray for those who are searching for meaningful work, affirming that they are being led to their right place of employment. There is joy in knowing that any job we do is well done. Let us each take a quiet moment to bless our own life's work. Let's each take a quiet moment to bless our own life's work. That may not be a job. It might be a, um, an idea that you have, it may be a dream that you see unfolding, it may be something in the future that you are moving forward toward. And we give thanks for the health and strength that allow us to help meet the needs of ourselves, our families, our neighborhoods, and our communities. We bring forth the best in all that we do, united in spirit and purpose with people in all walks of life. We give thanks for the good that is accomplished through our loving support and cooperative efforts. And the daily word back then was work blessing. We'd also like to bless every place around the world that seems to be struggling or going through something. Haiti, so many places, the flooding up in the Northeast, the fires out in the West, the situation in Afghanistan and so many other places that are seeing conflict. We just send peace and love. And for me, I always like to see helpers showing up, people being motivated to do something, whether it's financially or physically, or showing up and doing the work, or as Peggy mentioned so beautifully, the prayer work we do. Prayer is a very, very powerful thing. So again, good morning here at Unity Athens, and we are just so delighted to be here for another Sunday. I just came back from Canuga, which is a yearly retreat that is put on by the Unity Ministers of the Mid-Atlantic States. If you've ever been there, you can raise your hand. I know Peggy and Betty have. Betty was just there. I've been there many, many, many times. And... Um, it's a gathering of all people. It's not just for ministers, but it's put on by the ministers. And we have scholarships here every year. So next year will be in September at a different location, Lake Junaluska. We're very excited about that. I'm part of the organizing team usually, and there will be scholarships again next year. So we are hoping to have a whole crew up there. It was a little quieter this year, but it was still quite a few people. And I'm going to be giving during the message different ideas and things that came up during that time that I felt were inspiring and that I hope you feel are inspiring too. So we have some announcements this morning. Yay, announcements. For those that are newer, that's just something we did because people always are like, oh, here come the announcements. So <laughs> we kind of try to raise the energy of that. First of all, as Peggy mentioned, World Day of Prayer is the 8th and 9th, and there are so many things online, and you can go to that website at unity.org forward slash WDOP for World Day of Prayer or WDOP. 
and there's already just so much there. One of our favorite musicians, two of our favorite, favorite musicians here, um, Denise Rosier and Eddie Watkins Jr., who played in a lot of um, wonderful bands back in the, I think in the 70s and 80s. He's a master musician. He, my favorite thing that he mentioned when he played on the song, I Will Survive, and when I found that out, I was like, oh, one of my favorite songs. And Eddie Watkins visited us several times when he was on that particular cut. Other announcements. Kathy Payne is having another amazing garden tour at her private home, her gardens. She is a just a master of knowledge of gardening and the eco-environment. And she's certified as a wildlife sanctuary and a bunch of garden um, accolades that I can't even name and I know some folks have been there before and just found it amazing and delightful and also educational. I know I learned from Kathy different ways to keep the mosquito population down in my yard just from the types of flowers that she plants besides the fact of um, dumping water out when you're laying around in spots. I hope you'll consider doing that. That is on Saturday, September 18th, I believe is the date. And there are links on our website and through the e-newsletter, which is always out on the Facebook page also, where you can sign up for that. It's a fundraiser for Unity Athens, and we are so delighted and grateful that she is doing that to help support Unity Athens. Other announcements. Peggy has two groups going on, and you can email her at P. Olson, P. Olson, five, 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 five. I'm learning your email address <laughs> by heart. That's very strange and odd. At AOL.com. One is on Tuesdays and Thursday mornings, really early. I haven't been there yet, but who knows? <laughs> and then one on Wednesday evenings on a book by Jim Rosemurgy, who I'm going to talk about a bit because he was up at our Canuga retreat and he's an amazing mystic and author and unity minister. I think that's it for the announcements. Sometimes one of them will tap me on the side of the head as we go through our service. But now it'll be time for meditation. And if you're new, know that we always include at least two to three minutes of deep silence during meditation. Now it might not be deep silence where you are. There may be some things going on or a car going by or a dog barking. That's fine. We are just practicing the practice of going into the quiet. So I'll guide us for a bit, we'll have some soft music, and then we will go deeper and deeper into the quiet and then come back out again. Some of us like to say a mantra, something like so hum, or God loves me, or I am that I am, or Bible verse, or a verse from some text that you find sacred. As we breathe, perhaps you would like to turn your lights off at home or light a candle. I like to stand or sit with my feet on the floor, especially if I'm outside, feet on Mother Earth, and feel that energy, those ions from Mother Earth healing, raising up, and also the energy of the universe flowing in from the top of my head and the energy coming up from the earth, from the bottoms of my feet. And there certainly and always seem to be things on our mind, perhaps some worry or some fear, lots of things going on in this world, some concerns, maybe something is troubling you. In this time of meditation, Perhaps bless it and set it aside for a bit. Or give it up to however you see God. Or just release and focus on the breathing, taking deep breaths and holding them as long as you are comfortable and then letting go. Prayer and meditation are gifts we give ourselves. So we breathe in and we let go. We breathe in. let go. We let go of worry and fear. We 
We let go of the appearance of pain, sorrow, just for now, just for these moments. Things in the past we let go of for now. We allow the knowing of the essence of God within us our light, our love, our consciousness. To warm our hearts and our minds with a gentle warmth, with a healing presence. a whisper upon a sigh of all is well. All is well with my soul. If others are on your mind, Whispering all is well, no matter what. God is with you. The infinite I am that I am is with you. We allow the music to soothe and settle us, taking us deeper into meditation. Like a balm for any pain. Like a healing touch for anything that feels achy. And we breathe into that. Recognizing the filling of light within and around us. And as conduits for that light, we are able to send it out. As healing energy, as comforting energy, as the recognition of light in others, and as unconditional love, love beyond conditions, love no matter what. We hold our dear ones in that space. We hold our communities in that space. Our planet, our world, all existence. As we turn deeper within and rest in the quiet of the silence, where we affirm and know our constant connection to Source.
peace be still peace be still we can tell that when our minds get busy Whenever stressors or stress appears, peace be still. When worry shows up or seems to overtake reason, peace be still. We can send out that vibration to others on our hearts and on our minds. And when we're ready, only when you're ready, you can open your eyes. Perhaps take some more deep breaths. And remember that you can always return to that sacred space any day. And in doing so, when things get seemingly unsettled or fear comes in, we can remember what it's like to sit in the silence and just know. And we open our eyes here now when we're ready and we turn on the lights and it's bright and brilliant and cooler outside. Yay! We did a yay for announcements. We should do a yay for not 96 degrees on a regular basis. Yay, yay, yay. Yes! So, I have all these wonderful bits and pieces of things that I wrote down and put together over this last week up at Canuga. And I want to make a couple comments that Jim Rose Murgy shared about Charles Fillmore, one of our co-founders of Unity, way back in the 1880s, when there was a lot of new thought speakers going around and there was a lot of information coming out and um, Charles and Myrtle were actually contemporaries of the founder of what they called religious science back in that day. It's now Centers for Spiritual Living. And, and it's just wonderful, all the connections that there were at that time. But Jim Roseberg was talking about Charles and all the wonderful coincidences that come into life when you're on the path and all the connections and things show up. And our Daily Word has been around. That was one of the first magazines that was ever published by Unity for over 100 years. But I did not know how it first became published. And there's a story from World War II where some people were on a train and I think there was some warlike incidences going on and everybody had, I tried to say that without bringing up examples, so everyone had to get under their seats for protection, and a man named Frick, I forgot his first name, uh, went under the seat of the train and found a little booklet under the seat, and it was the Daily Word. Don't know how it got there. This was in Germany, I believe, and now it would have been in England. It would have been in England, and he was publisher, and so he started publishing the Daily Word in Germany, and it was just such a delightful coincidence. You find something, you find something. Also, Charles, I believe, I always wonder what it would be like if people like that were alive today, if Charles and Myrtle were alive today. How would they see the movement? How would they move forward? I think he would have been the first one to be broadcasting and live streaming way before 2019. Um, but he had a radio station. And back then, radio wasn't regulated with all our federal regulations of how many megahertz you can use and everything. So he was booming it out of unity. And the radio wave volume was up so high that it reached Nigeria. I knew that it reached there, but it didn't connect with the thought that it was because he had all this freedom to blast it across the world. And I, First International Unity Church was in Nigeria, and there are some there to this day, all because he knew enough to turn up the volume, which is just fabulous. Um, 
So other things that we talked about and learned was Jim Rosemurgy talking about how to be a wick in God's candle. And he even wrote a book about that. And the idea being that we often pray to God to fix things or, you know, and that's fine. You know, dear God, help me with this or infinite spirit, give me the energy for that or however one prays to the divine, help, help, do this, do that. And instead we are all, not instead of, but on top of that, we are all wicks in God's candle. Our prayers are important. So we can be the ones doing the blessing in the world. We can be the ones extending prayer. We can be the ones living in that consciousness that our light and our words and our thoughts are powerful and make a difference. He says this, how to be a wick in God's candle, the book, was written to help caring, compassionate people who believe in the power of prayer. For thousands of years, we have prayed for one another. The march of progress through science has touched nearly every area of human experience. However, we tend to pray for one another as we have for thousands of years. What do we do? We ask God to act instead of acting ourselves, instead of making a difference ourselves. And he goes on to say, the final section of the book contains exercises and questions to help the reader make the foundation principles of how to be a wick in God's candle and become deeply rooted in the soul. Imagine a world where people are committed to being wicks in God's candle. So perhaps you might want to practice with that in meditation time, seeing yourself as a wick in this incredible candle and lighting areas of the world. And he says, perhaps this would be our prayer. As this, united with the human family and living in a conscious oneness with God. And here at Unity Athens, I always like to say your name for God. So not saying your name for God, but you put in your name for God, because there are so many names. Living in conscious oneness with God, I am a wick in spirit's candle radiating light to the world. In this moment, the wicks of the world unite, and earth is ablaze with God's goodness and light. I'm going to remember that when I catch a bit of the news and I'm trying not to watch it too much or where I get concerned or worried about things going on. Seeing me being that wick and all of us being those wicks and having it ablaze with God's goodness and light. And that fits in so well with the Unity World Day of Prayer also. So please remember to go in there on Thursday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Wednesday, Wednesday night, and Thursday. Wednesday. You know, I always, because it's a day, but it's not a, it's like an evening hours. and a day, so 24 hours, because if they just started in the morning, it would go through the next morning. It works. Yeah. We know it works, because we've experienced so many wonderful ones of them. Another tidbit I got was from a, what it was called a sonic energy tour with Jeff Holland. And he also did a Wednesday night drum circle out of the pavilion by the lake where we were sitting outside. He had 40 drums that he brought along. It was amazing. But he did a service inside. It was one of the keynotes. And imagine the stage three times the size filled up with gongs, drums, circular instruments from Africa that had a very thin with and just sang as he touched them. Singing bowls, both crystal and brass. Just absolutely fabulous. And it goes so deep because that music, those chimes, the vibrations take you so incredibly deep. But he said one thing when he was explaining how some of these gongs are made. The metal is hammered gently to get them into shape. And he said, each time the hammer hits that metal, it adds depth and dimension to the gong. And I asked him afterwards, I said, so does that mean to each time our hands or playing it 
with a mallet of some type, hits that gong, does that add to the dimension of the gong? And he said, yes, indeed. And that made me think of our lives because each time we go through something that might feel like we're hitting metal or it might make a noise that sounds not perfect right now, we are adding depth and dimension to the soul, to the inner being that we are. And he said this, that the healing in these wonderful workshops and presentations he gives of all the sound, the healing is in the silence between one note and the next. And it's also in the discordance, the not so pleasant notes. And that made me think of times in my life where there was discordance. And I thought, yes, indeed, there's healing in that. There's healing in those times when things are quiet, and maybe you're not hearing the voice of spirit, or maybe nothing seems to be answering in the prayers that we pray, or the wishes we send out there, or nothing is working our way, or we're really concerned about something. There is healing in that, in the silence, in the discordant noise, and in the silence. The dissonance when the notes aren't smooth. So I think of times in my life when the notes aren't smooth or weren't smooth, and there's healing there. So coming home into the mystic was the entire message of the retreat. We always have an overlying message. And you can ask yourself, what does mysticism mean to me? Are we all walking mystics? I like to think so, because it's got kind of a magical energy to it. Are we seeing things beyond reality? Quote, unquote, reality. Are we able to project into this space that is beyond what we walk through? beyond what's drawing our attention, making us upset, or making us feel like we're stumbling or questioning our own worth or value. Are we able to see beyond that and know that we have a higher purpose just by being here, just by being born? You know, we say it often, your life matters, my life matters, or their life matters, but it does. It does to the deep core of our being. Every thing that might be considered a misstep or a mistake or a misspeak takes us to a higher level. I truly believe that. I truly believe that we are creations of something that is ongoing, not just a moment back in the days of God coming to Abraham, or God speaking to Moses. I am that I am. But something beyond that, that we are here for incredibly divine purposes. That is the feeling I got at Canuga. We also have a talent show on Thursday nights. I am a poet, and I do not, in case you're wondering about coming back, I do not read poetry every Sunday. Once a year, I usually do. Laura's nodding her head because she knows I read poetry because I usually write something fresh and new for Canuga because we have the talent show. And I like doing poetry that I can read out loud, be a little presenting with. But the idea for this particular one that we will close with and then have our love offering, our sacred exchange, and some closing prayer and music is the statement that was said to be said from God to Moses, I am that I am. And I've looked at this and thought about it and I remembered something in one of my favorite books on the Aramaic Bible. And I studied under him, Rocco Erico, when I was in ministerial school. And his definition of that looked at the verb in it. I believe it was the Greek or the Hebrew. And the verb is not present tense, he says. It's a verb that implies now and ongoing. So Rocco defines it as 
I am and will be, Spirit saying this, I am and will be all that tomorrow requires. Ooh. And I, I just think on that and I meditate on it because it's got that motion to it. It's not just something that was said thousands of years ago. I am and I will be all that tomorrow requires or may require. That is the creator, and we are creations of the divine, so we are that also. We are and will be all that tomorrow requires. What a powerful way to look at our lives instead of, oh my God, you know, can I get through the next year or what's happening in my life is just overwhelming. I am, because I'm part of that I am all that tomorrow may require. So read the poem. I had to uh, write it because I didn't have my printer with me, so excuse any stumbles. Do you remember who you are? Claim your inheritance. I am a child of God. Is that something you say? You and we are a creation of the divine creator who told Moses I am that I am. The verb in Aramaic shows present into future. I am and I will be all that tomorrow requires. We, you, do not inherit sickness. Thank you, Myrtle Fillmore. You are wholeness, you are wellness, you are resilience, you are peace, kindness, strength, wisdom, love, and every one of those 12 powers plus joy. You, we are incredible, incredible. A human being, spirit in this world, that is who you are, what we all are, and when we remember that, when we sink into that, when we let that fall like manna upon us, when we wrap ourselves up in it, snuggle it around us, like a cloak, and now not an invisible Harry Potterish cloak, but a yes I am cloak, a sparkly, joyous cloak of infinitesimal light. When we remember that, maybe not all the time, but even some of the time, it makes a difference, and we make a difference. Just by holding that and knowing that in our mind, rightly, knowing you are a creation of the divine creator, part of always connected to the divine, holy, all, infinite creator of creation. The whatever name we or you call the divine, even when we're not feeling it, it is. Even then, you are shining out your light, your love, to this world. Even when you're sad, or worn out, or scared, or overwhelmed, or feeling powerless, or feeling distraught, or wanting to give up, or feeling unloved, or unworthy, you are shining out your light and your love to this world. You are stronger than anything that appears to be going on in this world. That is your divine inheritance. That is your ancestry.com. And your spiritual ancestry.com. That is who you are, whose you are, how you are, and how you forever shall be. God said, I am and will be all that tomorrow requires. You are, you are and will be all that tomorrow requires. Amen. And so it is. Please think about joining us at our next retreat, we can't call it the Kanuga Retreat anymore because it's switching locations. So the UMAS Retreat, U-M-M-A-S dot org, and there's details already about next year. 
and we're going to have a great time and there are going to be lots of people and no one's going to have to wear a mask and we're going to be jumping around hugging each other it's going to, there's so many hugs building up can you feel that like in the atmosphere in the ecosystem and all these hugs that might be if you don't like hugging you know might need to take a pause the first few days of that because there's a lot of hugging building up and it's fine not to like hugging also anyway so our sacred exchange is a time that we give back as jim rosemurky was talking about at this retreat and it reminded me because i love that saying about you know it's going to come back to you pressed down flowing over infinitely but we don't give to receive we give to give and in that giving, things do come back to us. And he talks about giving with generosity and supporting the things we believe in. And yes, it does come back multiplied abundantly, but the manifestation is in the giving. He gives examples of if he gives someone $50, they didn't manifest it, he did. He manifested the energy of that. So. We have a slide up on the board. There are many ways to support Unity Athens. And yes, we do remind this every week because the ongoing gifts and donations and prayers for prosperity make a huge difference and have made a huge difference over this year and a half, especially. So there are ways on our website. If you can't see the screen on your device, it's at unityathens.com under donate. We have baskets here in our beautiful sanctuary and we bless our gifts and we bless our abundance, not to give to receive, not to give on any stringent giving order, but just to give from the heart whenever we're feeling it. So we hold our prosperity thoughts, our abundant thoughts, our gifts, our knowingness over our hearts. And we have a sacred exchange affirmation because we know as we give, the giving returns and it goes out into the world and it blesses all. And I'll say it slowly in case you again can't see the screen on your device. Divine love flowing through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. I am so blessed, exclamation point. And then your name for the divine. Thank you, infinite spirit. Amen, and so it is. And we bless our gifts, and we bless our giving, and we bless our abundance, and we bless all the world. And we see so many helpers in that frame of abundance going to all the places that can use help right now. As we close out our service, we play the peace song. I believe this version is by Jennifer Farron, who will be back with us in person in, I think, the first week in October. And we're looking forward to the time we can have live music in here again. It's really a wonderful addition to our services. So, Keep in mind all the announcements are on the e-newsletter. Keep in mind that oh, on Wednesday, I am holding an in-person meditation, first Wednesday of every month. That'll be from one o'clock until two o'clock. You can come for part of it. We meet in here, mass are required, soft music, deep meditations and prayer, and also time to take prayer requests if you'd like. And we continue to bless that box on that stage on the altar area is full of prayer requests from the Canuga retreat and from our Making a Difference service that we did some weeks ago for the appearance of the opioid epidemic. So again, blessings to everyone here and to everyone that's watching online and may you have a wonderful holiday weekend. May you find a way to bless yourself today and in the days ahead and may you and your dear ones and all that are on your heart and minds feel the blessing coming out from you on this day. I'm going to sing with my mask on.
switch remembering. Um, let's have a closing prayer. Just seeing ourselves and our world filled with the light and the love of God. All those candle wicks burning. Peace where peace will help. Helpers. People getting along and understanding their differences better. People coming from a place of loving kindness. Diversity, inclusion, equity. We hold that space for our world on this day. Blessings, healing, lighting, many, many candles. And we will say our prayer of protection. It's also on the walls. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. Kevin, how about a little closing music as we fade out? Thank you so much for being with us this morning, and we still have our book sale going on in the back room if anyone wants to peruse that, and lots of free booklets here in the sanctuary if you're here today or if you come on Wednesday. Blessings and namaste. music. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. Okay. You, you want to <laughs> close be closed out? Yeah. 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 Yeah.